high school coach is John Machota from Oxnard will join us as well. So, all right, Jerry Johnson, Jerry, John, Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, and Mike McCarthy. Today, this is State of the Union, State of the Cowboys. I think this is a, the second year in a row that I haven't been there when it had it. We had it because last year they didn't have it in Oxnard. It was in Frisco. So it's been a while that I haven't, like, been there. In fact, three years in a row because 19, Paul, you were there early, and then I went out there a little bit later. So expectations, expectations. When you have a star on the side of your helmet, that's the answer is obvious. Like the same thing with the Yankees or the Lakers, Alabama football, or maybe a name, two or three others. Here's Jerry. Uh, I have to uh, uh, give us an uh, arrow up regarding uh, having Dak <clears throat> and uh, also being uh, uh, have better health in our offensive line. And so that I would hope that uh, uh, without the turnovers that went with them, that we could get back to the early part of the season last year when we were really gen and offensively. Need to eliminate some of those turnovers, but that we were having during that time as well. Uh, defensively, I would think that it's going to be a different ball game. And uh, we've got a lot of uh, the kind of thing that you can make good defenses out of. We've got size, we've got speed, uh, we've got. Uh, 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 people that know how, how to <clears throat> take that, that and a lot of times the stuff that goes with it which is inexperience I think we've got a way to make it work big for this season you put those two things together and I think we've got a chance to be a real good team alright so that's Jerry on the expectations he also made a comment about uh, they asked what do you need he's we need another Charles Haley to walk through the door Yeah, they, and that was kind of one yeah, of a that, quick offhanded thing but he said that's kind of what they need is a Charles Haley or a Dion that can come into the defense and make it yeah, scary. Take it, take it up to the next level, which both of those guys made the difference in Cowboys winning Super Bowls because they were as good as anyone at those positions. And also with Charles Haley, he taught them how to win in, in many ways. Not that they weren't on the cusp of that, but he took them to the next level. Paul, which is the one where he got emotional? Um, both of these. The next, which one? Yeah, There's both five. these next two. Uh, this okay. I'm getting back so to the Super Bowl. We and, all know this, yeah. and I'm sure Jerry gets sick and tired of hearing it. But I mean, it's his team, and they surely lapped it up when they won three out of four in '92, '93, '95. But it has been now over a quarter of a century since the Cowboys, America's team, the standard of Super Bowls and Lombardi trophies, has played in an NFC Championship game, much less a Super Bowl. Well, I, uh, uh, we, we need to have a Charles Haley appear. <laughs> you follow me? Because we got him, and we started going to Super Bowl. Well, but you say, well, Charles didn't do it himself. Of course not. But he was a big, impactful player. And we took some risk, and he first to tell you, and he was an impactful player for us. Obviously, uh, Deion Sanders helped get to some Super Bowls. I'm not talking about the very obvious, and that was the organic growth that Coach referred to of the players that we uh, that brought on, brought with us as we when we first got here. Uh, I think we've got a combination right now, seriously, and I'm not making comparisons, and you can get in so much trouble doing that. But I think we've got a combination. I think Coach is right of youth players, talent, as well as we've got some solid, solid, talented veteran players and when you look at our top uh, 10 11 paid guys they're guys that can make major contributions to this team we had a core base like that in those uh, championship years that made that core base yet we boy we had some talented young guys come through we're we're starting to look like that when you look at team makeup now, I'm not comparing Troy and Dak, or I'm not comparing Emmett and Zeke. I'm not doing that at all, or certainly not comparing Michael uh, with anybody we've got at all. Uh, but as I started this meeting off with, uh, Michael it was is a special thing. Uh, do we dare think we could have one of those on this team that would have that kind of leadership role? We may have it. Only we thing I'd add to that it is... It might be your quarterback. All right, so that's Stephen was trying to get a little piece of it in there, and of course Jerry then wrapped it up with that. Um, and this was uh, to me. This was this is where he got a little emotional on what he would do to get back. Um, all the things like 
Yeah, I think like give I, up an arm. I, I think I think one of the things that people say about Jerry that is there are many things that people say about Jerry that are totally fair. He is not a good general manager. He's average at that, but he's not been good as being the general manager of the Cowboys. That's that's true. There is this perception that all Jerry cares about is money, and I think that's completely unfair. Well, uh, yeah, I understand, but remember earlier this week when Stephen Jones was asked about the two biggest accomplishments they had since they bought the Cowboys in 89, and one of them was AT&T Stadium, and another one was the star. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, and, and I don't... To me, you, you'd say there's three. There's 92, 93, 95, but I understand... But they are brilliant at making money and making a bucket load of it. And they also were, you know, uh, but I don't think he just cares about money, although everything they do, Paul and Craig, is about showing off how much glitz and glamour they have everywhere they are, whether it's training camp or the bus or when they're doing something on his yacht or it's the star or it's AT&T Stadium with their, you know, gold trim furniture. You think about it. Well, yeah. I mean, look, he specifically when the when the Washington media comes into town because he knows how poorly they're treated by Dan Snyder rolls out. I mean, we there's, I mean, prime rib, you know, in the, in the box but for the no media prime rib that plays in the secondary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. uh, but this is Jerry Jones on what he would do to get back to the Super Bowl. You you've often heard me say you would be shocked at. If I could write a check and know that I was going to get the Super Bowl, what you would what you would do with that? Uh, but uh, uh, I, I'm I don't want to confuse this with not being realistic. Uh, I've always had to be pragmatic at the end of the day because if not, you'll end up on the outside looking in. You have to be real. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I've, I've never thought that we. Uh, couldn't uh, be better or never thought that we couldn't uh, make uh, uh, make it happen even when we were not as on paper or we weren't as technically as uh, good or sound uh, but I've never thought that and uh, and I've got too many examples of how shorthanded people have knocked them out of the park before and a lot of them in a lot of different areas. And so uh, I really uh, don't know that uh, uh, I have any days or I have any weeks, but what I don't think, there's a pony in here somewhere. And so uh, I have a lot of the days when you've got to ask yourself is what's, what are you doing in the middle of this? Uh, but uh, so uh, that served me well. That served me well. I'm, uh, this isn't an I me, but uh, uh, I've had a lot of people tell me you're naive and or say that he's naive well it's a beautiful world it's a better world to be naive than to be uh, skeptical and be uh, negative all the time and so uh, i do my best work i think uh, when it's more positive and so i need it to be uh, promising and i need us to uh, have a way to go that causes me to do stupid things or it causes me to do excessive things that sometimes really work and uh, that's been the way i played the cards well i've heard him emotional before that that why now i mean he's getting old man it's i'm, been a I'm long telling time. you right now you're trying to like um you, you break this down kind of like it's the cowboys of the 90s talking he's just old like i'm listening to this and he's just old that's what he is he is old and emotional and he sees that, you know, he's not going to – he doesn't have 20 more of these. No, I know. He doesn't have 20 more opening day press conferences. So, you know, I'm listening and just being open-minded about it. And I, I, I just hear a guy who is old and knows he's old and knows he doesn't have a lot of these left and is probably soaking it up. But also, you know, at the same time pulling on him is that just competitive – I got to get another one. I got to get another one before it's all said and done. I, that's what I'm hearing. And maybe I'm – I'm not even trying to read into it. It just sounds like a guy who's struggling to speak because of his age and the emotions, and it's just a combination of those things. He's been here before. He's 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 broken his voice has cracked before, even 8 to 10, 12 sure. years ago when he introduced a coach or two, and he said, I get you, I hear you, whatever. Um, but 
All right, so then let's let's do one more, Paul. Then we got to take a break. Uh, yeah, this this one's a short one. Jimmy Johnson give you a laugh. is going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. We know the story, how they broke up, right? Yeah, and he did not. He was not as effusive in his praise as I think maybe people wanted him to be of Jimmy Johnson. But he did say this uh, of what Barry Switzer when he came in to interview for the job said to him. Think of those times we actually were together here four and a half years. Now I'd known him for. 10 or 15 years before that, or 20 years before that, and uh, thought the world of him or he wouldn't have been the coach of the Cowboys. And so when I look back at the time that we got to enjoy and what happened to us during that time, uh, I uh, uh, go back to uh, uh, what Barry Switzer said. Barry Switzer came in the uh, the office and uh, Jimmy had just left. And so Barry came down from Norman, Oklahoma to talk about getting the job. And he comes in and he said, where's Jimmy? Now, Barry had coached us both. He said, where's Jimmy? And I said, Jimmy's gone. He said, well, that's not right. Get him. Get him in here. I said, where's Jimmy? I said, Barry, Jimmy's gone. We're sitting here talking about you being the coach. I said, what in the world are you so anxious to talk to Jimmy about? He said, I just wanted to get both you little assholes. <laughs> That was Switzer. <laughs> I don't know what. Yeah, there you go. That's coming I mean, classic. Switzer. We've we've had Barry on uh, three times or so in the last year, and that doesn't surprise me. That's exactly <laughs> what he said. How I mean, did you, you guys f this up? How, right. Think about going in and calling your new boss an a hole. Yeah, yeah. In the interview. But that's very sweet. And, and then that's Switzer. That's Switzer. That's Switzer. Yeah, yeah. You know, going back to the days when they were all at the uh, in Arkansas, and 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 that's just hilarious. And and we'll have to get him on to talk about that as well. Maybe the week that, that Jimmy's inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That'd be interesting. 